Hello, in this particular video, we are starting branches of anthropology. Welcome to the ACE Anthropology. In this particular video, we will discuss chapter 1 of paper 1. The topics that we are going to discuss are very important because every year or alternative year, we find question on this particular section that is branches of anthropology. In this particular video, we will discuss about the branches of anthropology, the scope of anthropology and its particular branches. Then we'll discuss about the research strategies and we'll end up with the application. So without wasting much time, we'll start with the first, we'll first name the four branches and then we'll start with each one of them. First is biological or physical anthropology. Second is linguistic anthropology. Third branch is archaeological anthropology. And the fourth branch is sociocultural anthropology. And now we will discuss about each one of them in brief. In this particular video, we will be doing sociocultural anthropology, linguistic and archaeology. For uh, biological anthropology, uh, we'll conduct a separate lecture. So now we are starting with the sociocultural anthropology. This branch is very important. Sociocultural anthropology. This is very important. This is the merger of two uh, branches that is social anthropology plus cultural anthropology. Uh, this was uh, done by A.L. Kroeber. A.L. Kroeber. And we'll call him architect of sociocultural anthropology. He did it in 19, 1948. In the year 1948, he merged the social and cultural anthropology into sociocultural anthropology. Earlier, these were the two separate disciplines and we'll study them separately. Then we'll combine them and uh, do, uh, we'll write a complete answer on sociocultural anthropology. So here, we'll start with the social anthropology, social anthropology. This term that is social anthropology was coined by James Fraser. The term social anthropology was coined by James Fraser. The nature of social anthropology is vast, is vast and it's widened. But still we'll say that it is limited in nature, limited scope. The nature was definitely vast and widened, but the scope remains limited. In Britain, social anthropology, particularly we'll talk in the sense of Britain, that the founding father, the founding father for the social anthropology, according to Leach, Edmund Leach. According to Leach, the foundi founding father of social anthropology in Britain were L. H. Morgan Max Weber and Emile Durkheim L. H. Morgan in USA Max Weber in Germany and Emile Durkheim from France. So these were the three founding fathers of social anthropology in USA, Germany and France respectively. The main focus, the main focus of social anthropology was study society, was studying society. It is an holistic comprehensive study of society in space and time. So this 
was a holistic and that too in space and time that is how we'll uh, define the focus now we'll talk about the limited scope as we already have discussed that the scope of social anthropology was limited in nature limited in nature right so science of primitive society or simple society so they used to study the science of primitive or simple societies fraser who terms the coin social anthropology scope of anthropology covers he says that the scope of social anthropology covers belief rituals way of life thought pattern thought patterns of primitive people or simple people so this is how fraser defines social anthropology that belief rituals way of life thought pattern of simple people or primitive people then there comes malinowski Malis malinowski is a character that we will be seeing him in functionalism he'll be very important when we'll be doing the theories malinowski restricts he restricts the study of the primitive society so he restricts the scope to primitive primitive society he says that social anthropology is a branch of anthropology which restricts its scope or the study to limited simple society or primitive society then radcliffe brown rc brown Radcliffe Brown says that it is comparative sociology. Comparative sociology. This was obvious as they are studying uh, the main focus or the central theme is here society, and hence R. C. Brown called it uh, it as comparative sociology. Then comes Ivan Pritchard. Ivan Pritchard. even preacher says that it is the study of primitive society study of primitive society one thing which is important here and which as an aspirant or a student of anthropology is concerned in our answer we do not mention primitive society if we are not writing the name even preacher so if we are writing our answer and we are not mentioning the name of even pritchard we'll call it as simple society we will not term it as primitive society thus the scope of social anthropology before world war second before world war second was limited to the study of primitive society now we will move to the widened scope that how after world war the scope was widened it began as a science of primitive society otherwise known as tribal non industrialized simple lowly and low literate or non literate societies so earlier it used to be that we have uh, discussed like primitive simple tribal non literate etc but now the scope was widened after world war second and now they included the further study that they intens uh, intensively they started studying primitive societies and culture so now the intensively study started studying society of course and also they added culture of theirs it was dealt with now they started deal dealing with peasant village towns 
and cities they also started studying urban societies and hence the scope of their area was definitely widened from which was just limited to simple societies and now they have shifted to the societies of course the primitive then peasant and also to the urban one today the scope of social anthropology examines primitive peasant and urban society in all the world so according to walter and foster see this is important that even if we are writing something in anthropology or particularly focusing on socio cultural anthropology there is important that we should name, write down some names so here to name walter and foster so according to walter and foster the scope of social anthropology centers around many themes many themes so the scope of social anthropology it centers around many uh, scheme and modern adaptation of primitive societies and problems of their integ and problems of their integration with the modern society so how uh, will draw a diagram that if this is a social anthropology it will start somewhere from peasant then it will come to modern then will move to specific institution specific institution then will come to national character then will come to study of freedom peace war human rights etc gender relation ethnic relation community relation religion etc so even prichard uh, was empathetic of universal scope of social anthropology so even prichard say that it has now that is after world war second even prichard even prichard say he was sympathetic towards uh, the thought of making it or believing it to be universal scope after this we'll discuss the branches of social anthropology branches of social anthropology there were two branches the first is ethnography and second is ethnology will call ethnology as comparative ethnography comparative ethnography ethnography is descriptive account of particular society so ethnography is descriptive account of particular society particular society and it is important as it is building block for social anthropology that ethnography is building block for social anthropology now ethnology or comparative ethno ethnography it studies in general so ethnography it definitely studies in particular but ethnology it studies in ethnology study in general the comparative ethnography is further divided the comparative ethnography is further divided into topical specialization and area specialization so this particular portion is important because this uh, will be throughout in our uh, discussion if we are going to write about the branches this branches will be similar for cultural anthropology too now the research strategies research strategies in the second video we discussed about research strategies these are nothing but field world work approach second is holistic approach third is comparative 
फोर्थ इज एमिकेटिक फिफ्थ इज केस स्टडी एंड सिक्स इज सिस्टम एंड प्रोसेस एज फार एज द ब्रांचेस एंड रिसर्च स्ट्रेटेजीज आर कंसर्न दीज विल बी सिमिलर फॉर कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी टू सो नो विल स्टार्ट विद द कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी द स्कोप ऑफ कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इज यूनिवर्सल एंड इट द स्कोप ऑफ कल्चरल एंड एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इज यूनिवर्सल दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट द स्कोप ऑफ सोशल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी वॉज लिमिटेड बट हियर द स्कोप ऑफ कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इज यूनिवर्स यूनिवर्सल बिकॉज इट इज कंपेरेटिव फर्स्ट why it is universal because it is comparative right it is holistic it is comprehensive comprehensive study of culture in time and space in time and space culture is fact par excellence that is what eb tyler said edwin berlin tyler he said that culture is fact per excellence this is the definition of eb tyler culture is only found in human that is very important that culture is only found in human then we'll talk about its scope we are uh, already we have talked about how it is universal in nature but we'll also uh, discuss about its scope at it become began as a science of primitive societies and studying their culture that was the first quarter of 20th century culture is the totality of capabilities and habits that are acquired by man as member of society so there is a definition of culture that we will learn in chapter 2 and that definition will be something that as an aspirant you will recall and remember every time and write down the definition whenever the word culture appears so here that is we'll just out uh, write down few of the words that culture is something which is a totality of totality of all habits and capabilities capabilities and habits which are acquired acquired word is important here which are acquired by human being as a member of society member of society now franz boas here franz boas franz boas he studied eskimos study eskimo of basically they are from alaska franz boas studied eskimos of alaska and his student studies studied in africa europe australia polynesia malaysia etc and hence the scope of cultural anthropology which was limited to the primitive culture and society was widened and now after world war second or second quarter of 20th century the scope was widened it was same as social anthropology but added culture with society so uh, the cultural anthropology was similar to the social anthropology but the only difference there was the addition of culture that's the study of culture was added here now uh, the way we have discussed about the branches and research strategies research strategies these are similar the way it was the two branches ethnology ethnography ethnology further divided into two topical and area specific there are six research one two and i would 
ask you to simply write down the six research strategies now we will begin discussion or we'll conclude the first topic of this video that is socio cultural anthropology social culture socio cultural anthropology socio cultural anthropology this is relatively young branch which started in year 1948 it was started by al crober by merging social plus cultural anthropology and making it socio cultural anthropology the socio cultural anthropology has same aims that we have discussed that social anthropology and cultural anthropology had nearly the same aims that is living of human environmental effect cooperation and conflict changing of nature and personality it is also similar in theme theory right so al crober basically merged both of them into social cult socio cultural anthropology and the widened scope was universal the nature and the scope was scope was definitely widened and the nature was universal the socio cultural anthropology is a branch of anthropology which studies is a branch of anthropology which studies pattern relation among the life among society relationships among the lives among all societies through institutions or groups like marriage family kinship economic activity political life belief practices folklore We'll write down the definition of folklore. We'll uh, we'll begin paper two, or even in paper one we'll do. Then mythology and symbols. So this definition is important, and this is the definition that we are going to write. If question comes on social culture, social cultural anthropology, or if there is a question on uh, explain or give the branches of anthropology. so this definition was provided by gopal sarana so we'll remember this definition which was given by gopal sarana the following seventh or following scholars also emphasized on the universal scope so we already have discussed that the scope is universal so there were few scholars which also pushed this fact they were michael Ho howard michael howard conrad philip cotter and marvin harris try to remember what this where we have uh, heard this name or where we have written this name and yes the branches of course the last point will be branches and the next point will be strategies research strategies branches ethnography ethnology ethnology is further divided into tropical and area specific and there are six branches and i would request you to write down this particular part marvin harris has given the definition of anthropology and we have discussed him in our first lecture
now we will begin the discussion on archaeological anthropology archaeological anthropology we'll begin with the definition there was a question a couple of year back which was directly asked that give the definitions uh pardon me give the branches of anthropology there are questions where specific branch have been asked so i have given you how to write the answer you start with the definition you go with the scope then nature right we'll begin with definition scope nature before world war after world war then we'll talk about the wider scope application area of study and this everything will complete your 150 or 250 words limit now we'll write down the definition of archaeological anthropology so archaeological anthropology write down archaeological anthropology studies culture and societies archaeological anthropology studies the culture and society in the past in the past and reconstruct them and reconstruct them into the extent into the extent of picturizing them as they are or they were so archaeological anthropology studies the culture and society in the past and reconstruct them into the extent of picturizing them as they were the study of past is being done by recovering it is done by basically recovering and examining fossils cultural and environmental remains cultural and environmental remains and artifacts so uh, recovering and examining fossils cultural and environmental remains and artifacts this is how we are going to study the past or we are going to reconstruct the past now we'll again write down a name which will be important as when we will be writing an answer to archaeological anthropology or branches this name should come in archaeological discipline that is Walter Taylor Walter Taylor he gave old and new archaeology differentiation so we'll start with the scope definitely we are uh, dealing with the old one so the scope is will be scope will be limited the scope here will be limited in the first definitely we are talking here we are talking about old so the scope is limited then there is limited content scope is limited then limited content there is objective of uh, the depict uh, was not achieved here uh, the total cultural history of human kind that was the objective but here the objective of finding the total cultural history was not achieved to construct to construct the history of human kind 
so to construct the history of humankind this was the objective which was not achieved then comes the fourth that is there are three branches three branches to the old or new archaeological anthropology particularly here that is prehistory classical history and applied the limitation was that the applied branch of old archaeological anthropology was not studied and that was this applied was also not achieved prehistory was again divided into paleo meso paleolithic culture mesolithic culture and neolithic culture the research methodologies here now we'll talk about the research methodologies which were used in the old archaeological anthropology so research methods or research methodology so first is they lacked sophistication they lacked sophistication the main concern was to describe the main concentration or the main concern was to describe the procedure for collecting artifacts to collect how we are going to collect that that was the main concern then describe the material remain then describe the material remain then examine the relative frequency that how often one sees it the next was compared with similar artifact similar artifacts focus of the methodology was description quantification of the simple comparison so the focus here was basically description and quantification and that was uh, also it also included very crude or very simple comparison they never tried to never tried to explain the fact so this will come under criticism right this is also be a criticism this will also be a criticism and there were no analysis there were no analysis which was done after world war here the watershed moment was world war that after which everything changed so here after world war second the new archaeological anthropology came into picture new archaeological anthropology came into picture the main goal or the objective was the old archaeological anthropology which was which had failed in achieving that and hence there was a need of the new archaeological anthropology the content acquired that we'll talk about now similar the branches that we'll write down prehistory classical history and applied so in the old anthropology applied anthropology was not achieved here the applied anthropology was achieved here there was a study of marine salvage garbage and industry so during one of a study there was found that the people or the men in that village were not drinking but when 
the garbage of that area was uh, being scanned or checked by the people they found a lot of bottles of wine uh, liquor so that is how there there are prob probability that people may lie about a fact but the garbage will not so that will come under applied anthropology or applied archaeological anthropology the prehistory definitely the prehistoric will be text free will not have any text for classical we have the documents available so we'll call it as text edited and applied is definitely what is applied now we will talk about the research methods research methodologies it underwent a morphology uh, metamorphic changes metamorphic changes they were huge right then they br brought out sophistication third that the emphasis uh, the more emphasis was given on cultural evolution cultural evolutionary perspective that how things started how they evolved the general system approach they pro they followed general system approach we'll discuss about it in the later part the dependence on logical deducing reasoning increases now they started analyzing the facts right and hence logical deducing approach started and evolutionary perspective that was uh, brought down the great role of technology and economy that is how we found out about the technologies and economy the new archaeological anthropology is primarily concerned with the cultural process and pattern cultural processes and patterns the new archaeological anthropology was concerned about the cultural processes and pattern there are there will be similar that the scope we'll talk about the scope now the scope becomes universal right the nature and the scope widened and universal will also write down the branches that we had written in the earlier and will conclude this archaeological anthropology there is a little topic that uh, is remaining we talked about the applied archaeology or applied anthropology in archaeology right applied archaeological anthropology that what are the contributions of applied archaeological anthropology the first was preservation and management of cultural resource preservation and to preserve and to manage the cultural resource was first contribution of applied anthropology second was excavation and reconstructed the urban center of it excavated and reconstructed the urban center of mesopotamia egypt greece india etc it started helping government in locating and excavating war site it was useful for locating and excavating war sites the industrial sites excavation and museum that for example if there was a factory in the ancient period or the medieval period here we will focus on particularly the one which is extinct the culture which is extinct so 
there will be some factories there will be some industries so applied uh, anthropology will help us find it down and then there will be a creation of museum there is work to preserve natural historic and prehistoric treasures from the infrastructure so protection to the ancient structure protection to ancient structure from modern infrastructure was done by applied anthropology the salvage huge prehistoric monuments which were threatened by dams reservoir this was also being taken care by applied anthropology this is also important in order to maintain museum and of the private or public agencies which has cultural resource so management of cultural resource or museum management of museum and it provides the practical importance for contemporary human so practical importance i hope you are writing uh, right writing this point down uh, this is the third lecture of socio cultural anthropology and we are about to wind up unit uh, first chapters first part which is related to the socio cultural anthropology so in the next video we will be doing physical anthropology and we will be doing linguistic anthropology so thank you for watching stay tuned